In my opinion, the fire movement focuses too much on the unknown future. Who knows if we'll even be able to experience early retirement? Who knows if that retired early lifestyle would last? Who knows if early retirement will really bring us the autonomy and freedom that promises ultimate happiness? Welcome to the Early Retirement Advantage Podcast, where you will get weekly doses of inspiration to pursue financial freedom while caring for your mental health. After being diagnosed with several mental illnesses during the pandemic and getting fired soon after that, I decided to turn that into an opportunity to pursue FIRE, financial independent and retire early. If you're ready to kickstart your financial freedom journey while taking care of your mental health, you've come to the right place. You will learn the mindset and strategies to retire early from anything that no longer serves you. The biggest problem with the FIRE movement is not the focus on RE or early retirement. It is the focus on the future, not the present. This is the biggest thing that I've learned from my depressed and anxious days, and yes, I was clinically diagnosed. It is commonly said that depression is obsession with the past and anxiety is obsession with the future. In my opinion, the FIRE movement is the epitome of obsession with the future. When we think about the future, anything is possible. The future seems to always be better than present, right? We're like superwomen, able to do anything and everything in the future. Tomorrow is when the miracles come and everything gets done. But how do we know for certain that the future will always come? We've never really experienced what's ahead of us. So how do we know for sure that it is going to be better than the now? How do we even know we're going to like it? How do we know early retirement is what ultimately will make us the happiest? And what do we like about early retirement anyway? Is it the freedom? What does it mean to have freedom? Time, location, and self-expression freedom? Is it autonomy? The ability to choose what we do at what time with whom? Ultimately, both freedom and autonomy promise this one thing, happiness. That's what us humans are after for centuries, is even in the constitution. We're endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But what if autonomy and happiness do not have a direct causation effect? What if more autonomy does not mean more happiness? Think about when you were a kid going to school. Were your best memories in lunch breaks and recesses? Now that you're an adult working from home, you have full autonomy to decide when you're going to have lunch and when you are going to take a break. Does it feel the same? Or does it just hit different when you used to have less autonomy? Did you feel more happiness and excitement back then? And how about freedom? I can't speak for you, but in my experience, freedom also comes with a lot of responsibility. Growing up as a sheltered and privileged Chinese daughter of two Chinese parents in China, I had no say in my life. My parents made all the decisions for me from where I went to school, where I'll spend all my free time after school, to what would my college major be. I had no say. Now I've retired from corporate. I have a lot more freedom, relatively speaking. I can literally do anything I want to do in the world and travel to basically anywhere I want. You'd think I'm super happy because I have this newfound freedom right? Well, with freedom, it also comes with new responsibility. The truth is, I am pretty afraid of this newfound freedom. I can no longer blame my situation on anyone because I'm the one making all the decisions and you know, with the freedom, I'm the one making all the choices in my life. And to be honest, I'm also very lost. I've never experienced this much freedom. I've never been able to have so much say in my life. Sometimes I do miss having a boss and having more structure to my day. I sometimes do miss being told what to do by my parents. I do miss those days that were more controlled and sheltered with less freedom and less autonomy. And maybe that is the paradox of freedom and autonomy. Most people think that with more freedom and more autonomy comes with more happiness. But sometimes there is actually an inverse relationship between freedom and autonomy and happiness. So maybe freedom and autonomy can be seen similar to the study of optimal income for happiness. The Purdue University did a study on what is the optimal income for maximum happiness. So according to the study, the ideal income point for an individual is $75,000 for emotional well-being and $95,000 for life satisfaction. In North America, that number is $105,000. Any more to that, more money does not directly make you that much more happier proportionately. So what does this all have to do with the FIRE movement? 
In my opinion, the fire movement focuses too much on the unknown future. Who knows if we'll even be able to experience early retirement? Who knows if that retired early lifestyle would last? Who knows if early retirement will really bring us the autonomy and freedom that promises ultimate happiness? Focusing too much on the future or the end goal makes us lose track of the now, which is really the only thing that exists and will ever exist. There is no future. You can't go to the future. The future comes to you in the form of now, which is why it is always the now that we want to pay most of our attention to. It is the only real promised thing. If we're betting everything on the future, thinking that only the future will bring us ultimate happiness, then we forget to enjoy the now and feel happy right now. Just like a nine to five job, the fire movement is just a means to an end. A nine to five job exists because it promises you income, safety, and security, which ultimately promises happiness. Same thing with the fire movement. It exists because it also promises income, safety, and security, which also promises happiness. What if the point of the fire movement is not simply to dream about the far away early retirement life, but to live in the now, to be happy now while doing the basics to prepare for potential early retirement? What if you don't need to retire early to be happy right now? What if it is not about happiness, but the pursuit of happiness? It is the journey, not the destination. Share this episode with anyone you think can benefit from it. Thank you so much for tuning in and don't forget to subscribe. If you absolutely loved what you heard today, be sure to share it with me by leaving a review or taking a screenshot of this episode, tagging me at cherrytung.co and sharing it on Instagram where I'm most active. I can't wait to connect with you. In the meantime, go out there and seek your freedom.